about selling their home. These are five tips. These are things you need to know. Listen first, up, y'all. First of all, you have to price your home to sell. That's right. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's important to base the listing price on what the current market states it should be. And if you'll call a real estate professional out, most realtors will give a free consultation. They'll come out. They'll run some comparable sales. They'll look at other homes that have sold that are similar to, to your home. And they'll run some sales. And they'll also look at any active list things so you'll know what your current competition is. And they'll come out and help you set the right price. It is important to list it where the market states it should be listed. Th think, about it like, th time. think about it like this. If, if I'm browsing through a catalog for any item and I see that it's a, a $1,000, I'm just going to go right over it. Oh, yeah. Um, but then again, if, if it looks like it's a good deal, I'll maybe research it a little bit more. And then that enticement and that special feature might make it a little bit more valuable. And that's exactly what Sabrina's talking about here. That's exactly right. Number two, you've got to expand your listing search. And what I mean by that is you not only want your home on the multiple listing service, but you want it out there on social media. You want it in print material. Uh, you want it on every website available because statistics show 92% of buyers find their home on the internet. Can you believe that, Ben? That is absolutely insane. And I'll tell you, another source is radio. Absolutely. You want your house on the radio because folks will react and say, what is this about? That's right. And uh, that's exactly what you do, right? Well, that's exactly right. I mean, you want your home out there any possible venue that's available, you want your home being advertised through that particular media. Radio, print print media, internet's a big thing. Not many realtors are on the radio advertising properties. That's right. right. And you certainly are not going to get that on for sale by owner. <laughs> exactly. And that's, and that's exactly Sabrina's point here. That, that's exactly right. And it's also important to list during a peak season, which, by the way, we're in right now. Oh, yes, we are. Statistics show peak season for real estate is any time between April and June. This is prime Amen. time to put your home on the market. And for anybody thinking about it, Ben, you know this, there is less competition than there's ever been out there for sellers. I mean, fewer homes. We're at an all-time low in inventory, which means that you don't have as much competition, which yields an overall higher sales price. So it's a great time to sell your home. You have to go back to 2006 mm -hmm. to match the way it feels right now. That's true. So if you're if you're listing your home today versus two years from now versus eight years from now, you have to go back 10 years for it to be the same feeling. It's, it's a seller's market right now. That's true. The fourth important thing to do if you're thinking about selling your home is to stage it properly. Now, people think, oh, I'm going to have to get someone in here to stage my home. It's going to cost me thousands of dollars. And that's not true. <laughs> that's not true, is it? It's not true at all. In fact, uh, you know, when you're thinking about the, everything in life that you want to obtain has a price. Absolutely. You, you have to sacrifice. But the question is, what is the value for that sacrifice? What do you get in return? I'll tell you, you get to clean out your closet. I think it's a great, it's an opportunity <laughs> Absolutely. to make your life a little bit more organized. It's a great point. And you know, what we do at Sabrina Realty, when we come out, we'll be glad to offer recommendations, tell you things you need to do to help your home show better. In fact, we have a list and it is like a three page list of just cost effective ways that you can make your home show better. This is not going to cost you a lot. It's amazing what fresh paint and just decluttering and that type of stuff will do some fresh mulch outside. But like you That's said, right. uh, Ben, it's an opportunity to declutter. And why not go ahead and start boxing things up? Because you're going to be moving anyway That's right. as soon as your house sells. So that's that much less work you have later on when it does sell. And you do have to move. And it's going to help you get more uh, more return on your investment. You're trying to sell the house for the, uh, for the best price. So listen to your realtor. And I know Sabrina is an expert at this because uh, she sold hundreds, if not thousands of homes um, for her clients. And she's done it with these tips right here that she's given you. Well, thank you. And number five is offer incentives. Now we don't always do that right off the bat because if we're pricing the home, uh, accurately and we're doing all these other things, we may not need to offer an incentive, but if when the home's on the market, let's say we're not getting the activity that we really wish we were getting, then that's when we may need to think outside the box. What else can we do? Do we offer an agent bonus, some type of incentive? 
Do we offer to pay some of the buyer's closing costs? Do we offer to leave the patio furniture? I mean, these are just things we can think of. That's why it's so important to hire a professional to work with you that is experienced and that understands uh, sometimes you've got to think outside the box a little bit to market a, a home and to attract that right buyer. Absolutely. So, and you know, uh, for anyone that does put their home on the market too, uh, you know, more and more, Ben, people are getting away from having an open house. And it's just, it's the world we live in. Um, you know, people are so skeptical about opening their home up um, to a stranger. And, and I get that. I understand that, um, but we still do open houses and typically those are done on Sundays and it is an opportunity for us to market the home and to run an open house ad and to attract people in there. But I'll tell you what I like to do when I do an open house more than anything and what I think is effective and we're actually doing this this weekend and I'll be promoting this listing later on in the show, but I like to, if I'm in a neighborhood, and let's say there's two or three homes on the market. Right. I like to reach out with the, to those other agents that have a listing and say, hey, why don't we do a community open house? Why don't we next Sunday open all the homes from two to four? Because what that's going to do, it's going to drive more traffic in. When you're saying this is a community open house, we're having this community open house in Ramsgate. Uh, and there's four or five homes on the market. Well, it's convenient. It's an opportunity for everyone to come through and view all the homes at one time. So if you're having an open house, I think that's something to consider is maybe having your agent do a community open house. Absolutely. So you can drive more traffic into the subdivision and uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, uh, appeal to that right buyer. But here's seven tips for sellers if you're having an open house. Okay. okay? Do not leave the pets behind. <laughs> take killer, right? <laughs> we don't want to get bitten. But <laughs> anyway, don't leave the pets behind. Uh, don't turn a blind eye to the kitchen. Kitchen is a big selling feature, especially for the female. Number one for females, no doubt about it. Absolutely. So have those counters cleared off. Pay careful attention. Make sure that uh, sink is sparkling clean. Do not turn a blind eye to the kitchen. Also, don't try hiding those dirty bath towels. Inevitably, they're going to open that closet. <laughs> they're going to go in that laundry room. How often does this Have happen? Have we sunk down to dirty bath towels? Is that what we're talking about? This is, hey, let's face it. This is what it, this is what success is. It's, it's down and dirty. So, right. um, you know, your, right. your house better be clean from corner to corner. Come on. And here's something else to consider. Why clean solo? Why not hire a professional to come in and clean before that open house? Because they're going to help. It you always looks out. better. Yeah. They're going to help you. They're uh, going to see the stuff that you just don't see anymore. Exactly. Help help you get the cobwebs down, clean those windows, those baseboards. You know, we never do that. They always run their finger on top of the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking at those baseboards. They're, they're checking seriously. it out. Uh, and then why not get a second opinion? Have a neighbor Ooh. or someone come yeah. in. And see see what they think. You know, just have your neighbor come over and say, hey, walk through my house. I'm having an open house Sunday. Uh, is there any recommendations you can make? Anything that sticks out as an eyesore? Because that's free advice. Uh, the other thing is you've got to maintain the yard. So push some fresh mulch. This is the time of year where you can push uh, some fresh plants, flowers. Really helps with curb appeal. And these are things that don't cost a lot of money. And don't forget to stash your personal items away. You know, I tell people too, you cannot have, you can't have a gun. You can't have guns. You can't have. Hold um, on one second. We've got a caller. Okay, we got a caller in our Well, thank Go, you for calling today. What kind of question do you have? How long would it normally take for a house to sell in this kind of uh, economy? Like if I was to list a house because I'm looking for one, like a three or four bedroom. Um, they're, especially apartments, they're just, it seems like it's a seller's market. It's, uh, uh, and the housing uh, prices compared to, let's say, Florida are uh, extremely high here. I guess that's because of the economy. But uh, for listing a house, how long would it take normally to sell? Well, let me answer this. Um, up until this year, uh, the statistics showed that the time on the market averaged about four and a half months. 
we're down to two months right now and that's the average time and the way that we derive that number is we take the least amount of time a home's on the market and the longest amount of time that a home's on the market we average that out and right now that is showing that it's two months so you can see in just the past year it's gone from four and a half months to two months so that does indicate for sure you are correct in saying it's the seller's market there's no doubt about it and if you're putting that house on the market and it's being advertised and you've got it priced right and it's ready to be shown i'm telling you it's going to sell quick yeah and, and thanks caller i really really appreciate that question about the selling side of it what the, the interesting to me the, you know i'm from the financial side and uh you know numbers are sort of hard to uh talk on the radio about but i want to paint a picture for everybody uh that's listening regarding this rent that the caller just brought up versus uh the home itself and buying it I just ran a payment calculation and the average home in this area is going to go for 150 to 160. That's right. No, no doubt about it. So assuming a very small down payment, your your payment on buying a $160,000 home is going to be somewhere between $800 and $900. That's a three bedroom, two bath. Mm -hmm. And that's with taxes, insurance in, in most areas. Um, think about this for a second, folks. If you go and rent a three bedroom, two bath apartment, uh -huh. your payment is going to be $1,200 to $1,300 a month. It's going to be probably uh, oh, one and a half times, if not double, what a house payment would be for so, the same thing. So you're going to save at least $300 a month by owning a home. Mm -hmm. Okay. So $300 a month. Now, now take that $300 and invest it over the next 30 years. At 30 years, you're not going to have a house payment anymore. That's exactly. a retirement plan in itself. Now, what about that extra 300 bucks that you put away? Folks, there is no better time to buy a home Absolutely than not. right now. So let's not get, let's not mistake ourselves. You know, it's, it's great. It's a great time to sell um, because it is becoming a seller's market. That's true. There's no, no doubt. doubt about it. But where interest rates are right now, you're, you're already getting a 20% discount on the Absolutely. home. So Absolutely. So when, when rates go back up two, 3%, it's it's like adding 20% to the home. Well, and rental rates right now are at a 15-year high. That's right. And what you can buy for what you can rent, there's virtually no comparison. You can get so much more home compared to the space that you're getting in an apartment or something like that for a lot less. That's right. And I'm sorry to take that tangent down to back to the buying side. Yeah. And I know we're no, on it's true. No, no, no. No, but, you're right, Ben. You're right. And I appreciate the call. Yeah, no doubt. So um, back to the selling tips here. I guess we're on listing your home. No, we just got through the open house tips. Okay, open and house we tips. We were right. Okay, we got, we another, got caller. another call. Oh, my this goodness. Is this great. is great. Hello, caller. Go ahead, caller. Hey, I have a question. Sure. Uh, think about reverse mortgaging. The home is paid for. Of course, I'm getting older. Got a lot of cash tied up in it. I'm uh, trying to get some information on how it works. One one question I have is that uh, if your house is priced for approximately three hundred thousand, that's just the example. Uh, do you price a price or is, is it discount? I I'm not sure if I completely understand. He's you, asking about a reverse mortgage. No, right? I understand that part. But you said what? What about the appraisal? If the appraisal comes in at three hundred thousand, say say if your home is priced three hundred thousand. And you reverse mortgage it, or are they going to discount the appraisal price? Let me ask you sure, this: Do you have another work to lay off? What will they reverse mortgage for? So it's so it, it, sixty it, something like that. Okay, let me. Thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me get you off here. So uh, on a reverse mortgage, first of all, uh, I had a sergeant uh, from the police force. Uh, just come to my office with uh, an attorney mm -hmm. and with his best friend. Wow. So uh, he came to my office and he was interested in a reverse. He'd already talked to a national company and uh, I'm going to skip ahead. When they left, the, his friend uh, came over and gave me a very good stern yeah. shake and said, why, why don't you teach reverse mortgages to everybody? And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I humbly accept that because th these aren't tough things, but here, here's, here's the bottom line on reverses. They're based on an, alg on a, uh, on an algorithm that includes the value of the home and your age, which includes whether you're a female or a male, because your life expectancy is based on that. So the amount you get on a reverse mortgage, if the home came in at 300, if you're about 62 years old, 
is roughly 55 to 65% of that value. So now Ben, is that if they own the home right out? If, if well, they don't have a mortgage or they, it's, or it's you, irrelevant of that. It's, okay. it's the, the point is, is the loan that they could get off the reverse mortgage. Uh, he, I believe this caller said he didn't have a mortgage. Right. Um, so he could have an, a line of credit yeah. for roughly 170 to $180,000. Right. So he still owns the home. He still passes it to his heirs when he, uh, you know, when he passes on. Right. But the, the key point is now he's got a financial instrument at his disposable as, as a line of credit right um that he can use uh let's say when the next big medical expense comes right. his way and let's right. say that fixed income is not helping pay those extra bills that right. are coming along exactly. and, and that's the real problem these days so and i you know a lot I, of people just don't understand the reverse mortgage and there's not a lot of information out there that's right and this is exactly why sabrina and i decided to do this show together right. because at the end of the day this when, when you talk about buying or selling a home, there's a lot of financial related questions. And in this case, reverse mortgage, he's asking about a refinance question, which doesn't have right. much to do with buying or selling a home. And that's what makes it so exciting. We hope to uh, to help everyone in their quest to, for, for good information. Um, I was reading up on one of the biggest companies in the world now called Google, right? Right. And they, they say that their number one, their vision, their only thing that they do is they organize the world's information in a relevant way mm -hmm. for the person searching for that information. Right. So the way Sabrina and I could be more valuable to the community and for questions like this is to have a financial guy and have a home expert That's right. to, to really come together and be able to answer questions just like this. So if a uh, caller, if you want more information on that reverse mortgage about that 300,000, I would want to know your age. I would want to know the, the age of the youngest party. Maybe you're married. Right. Uh, so maybe your spouse is 72 and, and you're 65. Well, I'm going to show you and teach you some things about that. Right. There's no obligation regarding that. You can simply call me on the phone. We can talk about it. You know what else Google does? It, it's funny you brought them up. Google also, they value their employees and they value their people. And that's something we do too. Because I think that that's also important. When you are working with someone and they're your client, we're building long-term relationships with them. We're going to sit down, take the time, answer their questions, work with them, make sure they fully understand. And we're going to treat them like family. That's right. And I know you do that and we do that as well. We pride ourselves in that fact because we're looking, we're not just looking at the deal we're doing today. We're looking at the big picture. This person is on down the road, may sell their home. They may buy a bigger home. They may downsize. We want them to come back. And I know that you feel that same way, uh, Ben. I know every time I've ever sent you someone to work with, you take that extra time and care. And that is so important because people want to know that, especially when they hire you and they trust you to handle something as big as a home. I mean, their biggest investment for most right. people. The biggest. They want to know that you're taking it very, very serious. So I think treating that person unique and customizing uh, a plan that suits them and what their goal is. I think that's critical. Yep. And Winning beyond the closing. Right. There's no doubt about it. And that's why a lot of our clients end up coming right back to us two, three years later it when all of that. a sudden they've got their daughter. I can remember one just in mind that uh, where yeah. he sent his daughter to us just a year or so later. And that's that that proves that you're doing something right. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's always about at, after the closing, are they going to be happy for a long time to come? And they know they know that value. Yeah, that so. is so, so important. And um, right now, well, when we come back, I want to talk about a couple other things before we go to the break. But when we come back, Ben, I think it's very important that we really talk about different loan types and stuff because people don't know what's available out there. No doubt about it. And that. when we come back, I'd really like to ask you about some different loan types. And let's talk about that and maybe what the qualifications are and that kind of stuff. But uh, before we go to break, I just want to tell you eight bad home improvement habits. Right, if you're thinking about putting your house on the market, here's eight bad habits. Having your light bulbs too bright. You don't want your light bulbs too bright. As a matter of fact, you want to open shades, blinds, and have natural light coming in. Blad uh, planting trees under the driveway or walkways. You know what that does over time? Uh, destroys the driveway. The roots crack the driveway. Absolutely. Over scrubbing a sink. That scratches the sink, and then you have to replace it. Don't want to do that. Overdoing it with can lights. Did you know can lights, the recessed lighting, they actually let air in to some degree. Oh, wow. So you don't want to overdo it. These are things you don't think of. Spreading too much mulch. 
Too much mulch suffocates the plant. Uh, using a glass cleaner on mirrors, especially a cheap one that causes streaks, repainting too much or fertilizing too much. The same thing, if you fertilize too much, you actually cause more weeds to grow. Wow. So um, for everyone listening, we are taking calls. You can call us at 423-800-8949. It's the Sabrina and Ben hour. We're talking all things real estate, home mortgages, loans, and more. 100% financing is next. We've got a bunch of neat products out there, so stay tuned. Uh, Sabrina and Ben coming your way here in just a few minutes. And uh, if you're uh, wanting to call our office, Sabrina Realty can be reached at 423-499-7780. Or our website is sabrinarealty.com. And how can they get in touch with you, Ben? Our phone number is 423-805-9100 or online homeratemortgage.com. Welcome back to the Sabrina and Ben Hour. We appreciate you for tuning in and listening today. Uh, this weekend, Sunday, Sabrina Realty is hosting a community open house. This is one of those community open houses where we're talking. And the about. weather's going to be nice. It's going to be beautiful. We're at Sunday from two to four. We're going to have Frost Creek Farms. It's a Fabulous subdivision out across from East Hamilton Middle High School. That's right. Very nice subdivision. Very well established. The homes are big. The yards are big. Lots of privacy. It's a great family subdivision. But we are going to be holding uh, open 9940 Frost Ridge Drive in Udwa. That's 9940 Frost Ridge Drive. Ben, this home is listed for $459,000. But listen to this. It has almost 5,200 square feet. 5,200 square feet. 5,200 square that's a, feet. That's a lot of, you know, Warren Buffett has 6,000 square feet. So, <laughs> so you're it's good. five bedroom, three and a half bath, all custom brick, huge yard. Huge yard. I mean, you cannot uh, beat this. This home is unbelievable. It's low county taxes, no city limits, very affordable, zoned for East Hamilton Middle High School. Which is a pretty that's desirable awesome. school. No, that's, that's very uh, listed at four fifty nine. We're going to have this open Sunday from two to four. There's actually a couple of other homes that will be open as well. So if you're thinking about moving to the beautiful East Brainerd Udawa community, come out and check it out Sunday from two to four. And you're going to have some information there on loans as well. That's right. Um, you know your payment on that if you only borrowed four hundred and seventeen thousand. Yeah. At four percent, which is actually not even that great of a rate right now. Right. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm doing worst case scenario here. Yeah. How much? Under $2,000 principal interest. For almost a half a million dollar home. Yeah. A, a home that's as big as Warren Buffett's home. Oh, this home is huge. It, it is monstrous. You got a family, you got kids. This is the home for you. And they can just walk to school because the school's directly across the street. Type in Sabrina Realty right now on Google. I know some of y'all are sitting at your desktop listening to the show. Go ahead and type uh, Sabrina Realty in Google and you will see her website pull up. You're going to see this listing on her website. You just yeah. got to go featured listings. Um, I'm telling you, this this home is gorgeous. 9940 Frost Street Drive. Well, you know how beautiful it is out here because you live right down I, the road. I live down the street. I mean, what could you ask for more than that, right? A lot of great things <laughs> happening out there. The, the taxes are low out there. Um, you, you know, you're talking about saving. If, if you're just a half a mile closer to town, you're talking about another hundred dollars a month, but and we're, you're saving that hundred dollars a month. That's exactly right. And that's lawn care for free. And we're ex uh, we're expanding our roads. We're uh, widening East Brander Road. There's a lot of good things happening in the community. Yep. The new so, roundabout just got painted. It, Praise God. It, amen. But anyway, so there's a lot of good things going on. We'd love for you to come out Sunday. Uh, you know, Ben, a lot of people don't understand. And by the way, before we get into loans, for anybody that has a question, we're here. We're taking calls. You can reach us at 423-800-8949. We'd Bring it love on. to answer your question. Uh, anything pertaining to real estate, community, mortgage loans interest rates, anything, give us a call. Even if you want to trump us or something like that, <laughs> we're not, we're not scared. No, we're not going to get into Trump today. <laughs> oh, we're not going to do that today? I thought that was the whole plan. We're that closer to the election. Oh, can we just do that? I want to get everybody round up today. Come I got on. you a Trump t-shirt, by the way. Where's it at? I thought you were going to bring it today. I'll bring it. I got to shrink it. It's a little too big for you. Okay. Well, what so, are you talking about? That makes no sense. Oh, yeah. 
you know, I, I heard there's a, a little, uh, I heard there's some Bernie shirts out there somewhere. Is there going to be a burning ceremony? Uh, uh, feel the burn. That's all I got to say. <laughs> all right, all right, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, speaking of different loan types, um, what types of loans are out there? Let's say that an individual doesn't have a big down payment or anything like that. They're, they're limited. They don't have a lot to put down on a home. What type of loans are out there that are either 100% financing or require very uh, little in the terms of a down payment. Sure. And, and I want to, I want to back into it a little bit because sure. at the end of the day, one, one, one thing that folks want to know as they learn loan products and down payment, which is right. very important to our mm -hmm. financial success sure is. Um, and protection of our, mm -hmm. of our future financial success is that down payment. But, uh, but think about this. It starts with your credit. If you're a high end borrower, you, you want the best interest rate. And the, we all sort of understand that if you're putting more down payment, that you typically will get a, a lower interest rate. Right. That, that's sort of a standard uh, theme that we all sort of believe in, in, and agree. Right now, that has changed a little bit. I think it's time for folks to understand and know that. Yeah. So you can do a 0% down with USDA financing, for example. That's right. Out in the county. Yep. In fact, if, uh, if that... Uh, that home, for example, in Frost Creek, yeah, it, it would qualify for USDA technically in terms of location, in terms of location. Right. Now, the neat thing about that is interest rates are in the mid threes right now on a 30 year term. That is unbelievable, Ben. I it's, mean, that is really, truly unbelievable. I think that's why things are just absolutely so hot right now. And there, there's still folks out there that don't understand right. the value, the, what difference that makes. We'll get into that a little bit later, but you know, on a USDA loan, the max home you're going to be able to buy is is roughly a quarter million dollar home. I mean, that's that's the max. And here's okay. why: um, you know, you're, you you've got a zero percent down option there mm -hmm. with USDA financing. Hundred percent financing. Location is important. Yes, because it's got to be in the more rural area. Correct. That's correct. Out, okay. Your family's overall income is important. Yeah. Okay. So what that means is you can't make over a certain amount. And I actually have a a list right here. Um, and, uh, if you have a, a bigger family, then you get to make more money because there's more money going out to support your family. So what I'm hearing you say is there's two requirements. First of all, the property itself has to qualify for a USDA loan in terms of where it's located. That's right. And the second, uh, qualification would be the individual themselves, I guess, is in terms of, and let's talk about that. Uh, if it's a single person, what their income limits are versus uh, maybe a young couple. Sure. So anyone with four children or less, yeah. your adjusted gross income okay. for the family must be $75,650 or less. Okay. So that's for a family of four. And then we're talking adjusted gross income, or is that, that's an individual. That, that's that's, that's it's a family. It's okay. household income. Okay. It's actually, even if they have an 18 year old, would they have to disclose that income? Okay. Gotcha. Now, now here's the neat thing. I know there's a few families out there listening right now that have five uh, in their family. Okay. Well, you can make ninety nine thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. So let's just call it a hundred grand. Yeah. You can make a hundred thousand dollars a year adjusted gross, which is not what your W two says. No. It's what the adjusted. That's after everything. Yes, after you adjust things down. So you could probably your W twos could add up to one ten. And you still would adjust down under the 99.8 cap. Yeah, that's not hard to make. Folks, listen closely. Mm -hmm. I told you that location was important. Right. And we told you that the uh, the income was important. We showed you a way to get that income down a little bit. Right. But here's the neat thing. With uh, the USDA financing, we just mentioned the interest rates are in the mid threes, which means you can buy more house. Right. Absolutely. And, that, and that's why you can probably get a, about a $250,000 house or less with uh, USDA financing. But the kicker is you could buy a home today with USDA financing. And by the way, Sabrina can help you oh, find yeah, it. Well, I'd love to. She, yeah. She, hey, go ahead and call into the That's show right. right now. We'll help you out right now. That's right. But the, the neatest part is you could come to the closing table with zero, zero that dollars down. Unbelievable. Zero dollars. We do it every day. It's, it's an exciting time for folks that qualify for USDA. So again, where's the home located? Hopefully the home needs to be under a quarter million dollars, which for right. ninety percent of us it is. Right, and your income doesn't need to be about one ten if you got five 
five total in the family. But that's adjusted gross income. That's after your taxes. That's a, you're looking at the tax return at that adjusted gross income yep. to determine that. And, so. and, and here's the thing. If, if you're not sure, you better give me a call. That's because true. Because this is, this is something, we're going to talk just like this. Yes. You know, you, you call me, we, we talk just like this that we're talking now and, and we get to the, to the heart of the matter. So you, you've got a question about it. You're interested in it. No one wants to put 20% down to get that three and a half percent. No, that's unbelievable. Let's do it with the USDA funding uh, out there. And hey, we got a caller. So I'm going to stop right there and see what we got. I thought somebody might call when they heard about that 100% fine. Uh, yeah, I don't blame them a bit. Okay, go ahead, caller. That's a good question, especially since you and I both fit into that category. We sure do. So thanks, caller. We really appreciate it. I'll, t I'll tell you, um, this is an exciting question. It's going to open some floodgates here um, because there's some dunk, there's some information that people need to know. Right. Self-employed borrowers. That's that's really what he's talking yes, about. Yes, that here. is. And uh, yeah, we don't want to pay Uncle Sam too much. But we don't want to uh, not pay enough, and then we can't afford a home. We write off everything we can. Trust me, I do it every year. Absolutely, and uh, the IRS needs to understand that there's a lot of expense in running a business. My background um, is accounting, and uh, if I had to credit anything to my success in mortgage loans, other right. than my energy, my enthusiasm, my passion to win, it's it's absolutely my education with tax returns. Right, I can see the truth in income where a lot of my competitors, they just do a really poor job here. Yeah. Um, They're they, just looking at the bottom line. Yeah, They're not looking at the full picture. A absolutely. For example, depreciation. If you've got assets in your business and you're depreciating that, that's that's income to me, folks. I, right. I'm going to add that to your bottom line. And that's one of many things. But, you know, call her to, to just get right to the heart of your matter. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to get a phone call from you later, 805-9100. Um, <laughs> we just came out with a, a, a program about a year ago that allows for one year's tax return. Yeah, that's for unbelievable. It was two years. It was two it was years, an and, and 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 then it was an average, and 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 then on top of that, if the income went up or down by too much percentage, a very small percentage, then they, you know, then they got a little bit more. Hey, let's let's get a microscope out and really yeah. analyze this, folks. This is exciting. We need one year's tax return right, right. now, right. and that and that's hot off the press. And now, uh, Fanny and Freddie are accepting that. Um, it's an exciting time. So. What we do is we take that bottom line income and we start adding the things that we're allowed to add. And some of those things like depreciation can add to that uh, bottom line. And when you're talking about one year taxes, that's right now. Go ahead, file them out, send them in. Let's get, let's make sure that your income works before you file them. Because who knows, maybe those expenses weren't so heavy uh, this right. year. And, uh, you know, maybe you'll find them next year. And, and something else that you can do, you know, if you had to not claim a few expenses that you normally claim just to, you know, have a stronger tax return. That's something That's right. you could do to get the mortgage. But as long as what I'm hearing you say is as long as they have a strong credit score and they've got a, a decent year, uh, one year tax return, that's all you've got to have Amen. to and get them alone. You know, I, unbelievable. I, I go back and think about the business that we tried to do together mm -hmm. or that we talked about doing the client called in and, you know, maybe their credit score is just not quite there. Right. Well, Credit score gates have, have, have lowered. Um, maybe you're out there and the income wasn't quite there. Well, guess what? It's one year tax returns now. That's a big difference. There's so many opportunities right now. I'm thinking about all the folks that, uh, you know, that's why so many folks are calling right now. So we, we're really anxious to hear from you again. Right. And there was a Facebook question we had. That's right. Uh, and the Facebook question, uh, you know, was basically saying, what? how long does the mortgage process take? And, uh, that's a great question. Yeah, it because, is. You know, on October 3rd, 2015, I'll bet Sabrina knows that mortgage law that yeah. happened. Oh, and yeah. It's called, we call it TRID. Yeah. And um, what it what it does is it added about three days to the closing process. And, um, you know, the average loan, when we get a contract on a home, right. it should take 30 days or less. Right. End of story. Right. And if you've got someone that knows what they're doing, they're experienced 
and what they do. They're going to be on top of this stuff and they're going to keep everything on track to close by the timeline. So I'm with you. I feel that uh, from the start of the contract to the day of closing, we're looking at four, six weeks tops. That's right. If you're dealing with someone that knows what they're doing. That's right. But explaining <clears throat> that three day period that was added, what, what you've got to do basically, uh, Ben, is disclose. You've got to disclose to the borrower what the true cost of lending are. That's right. So when you first start a loan pro uh, the loan process in a mortgage loan to buy a home from Sabrina right now, mm -hmm. uh, you get an what's called an estimate and it's called a loan estimate. Um, but now because of that new law, which I think it's a great law because it, it makes sure that the air is clear. It makes sure that there's very, there's a lot of transparency. And um, I'll tell you, uh, three days prior to the closing, you're going to have a closing disclosure in your hands that That's you right. signed by signing that closing disclosure. You're not even agreeing to it. That's right. You're, you're merely saying I have received a closing disclosure and I may or may not agree with it, but this allows me to get us to the closing table. It's actually a good process now because there's no surprises, no last minute surprises. Borrowers know exactly what they're being charged. They're going to know exactly what they need to bring to closing and they're going to know it in advance. And if there were any changes that need to be made, we just have to make those changes. And that's where we may have additional days. Uh, added to our closing date. It's when the, when those changes need to be made, and, and that's why partnering with the right realtor that's and right. the right lender is so important. Because if they if they have a good relationship, there's no doubt it's going to make your process smoother. We're you know like Sabrina and I, we can work together. We that's know right. what to deal with. We know how to deal with each other. Um, you know, everybody's different. And communication is key. You've it got is. to have someone working for you that's going to communicate. If there's a problem, they're going to pick up the phone. They know how to resolve it. They know who to call. And they're going to make that call and they're going to communicate. And then they're going to let you know what they're doing to resolve it. I, that's so important. Do you, do you think uh, Trump and Cruz, do you think they communicate well right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't talk at all. And that's the point. You, you need to work with a, a, an agent and a lender that are going to be able to communicate because they like You're each other. You're not comparing us to Trump and Cruz, I hope. Oh, no. I'm, I'm just saying the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's anyway, awesome. from Facebook, we have another question that just came in. Um, this is from James off Facebook. He wants to know, how does a person repair their credit score? That's a great question. Well, that's easy. You need to talk to uh, someone that's an expert at credit. That's right. And uh, and you have people you refer. Uh, when someone comes in, let's say that their credit score is almost where it needs to be, but not quite. Are you going to refer them to someone that's actually going to sit down with them, look at the overall picture and tell them exactly what they need to do? Well, that, absolutely. Of course, I'll refer them to a professional, but I consider myself the professional okay, when it comes good. to credit that's and uh, I provide that free of charge because ultimately my job is to take a client and to give them um, an approval no matter what. And that's, that's, you know, in, in my heart, everyone's approvable. Then now that don't, don't take me wrong here. Right. That doesn't mean you're buying a home through Sabrina tomorrow because you have a five, you know, 30 credit score. But what it does mean is it means that if you get on the right path today, right. that you will be buying that home through Sabrina. And that's my job. My job is to make sure that her clients get approved and get closed. So if, if I was going to answer this question, you know, very passionately to James, I would just let him know, Hey, look, look, everyone is, everyone goes through a, a problem here or there with their credit. Yeah. Some are surprising, some are unknowns and, and some are just, you know, unfortunate times in your life. What I would recommend is you talk to somebody like me, and I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody out there. Uh, you repair your credit score by doing the right things. And there's a lot of misnomers out there. Mm -hmm. um, I pull about ten thousand dollars worth of credit every month. So we, you know, so my experience is 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 living and breathing. Right. And the rules are changing. So talking to someone at a bank that doesn't pull credit, uh, talking to someone that used to pull credit, it's it it it, it makes no sense. You need to speak with someone that is currently dealing with credit and it has the tools where we can say, oh, that 530, my goal is to have a 630 by January of 2017. How do I do that? And guess what? I push the button and I let the computer tell me exactly what to do. And it's it's really awesome. It's actually easier to get a loan now than it was back in 2008 to 2010. Uh, like you said, there's a lot of new programs. You just mentioned the program for the self-employed person. I mean, there's a lot of new programs, so it's a lot easier. Um, you know, we were talking about the USDA loan. Uh, what What is the lowest credit score that you can typically have to get that 100% financing loan? So 
we need a mid score of 620. Okay. That's See? that's that's pretty standard. Now that's only on the USDA loan. Yeah. On a, if you're a veteran out there right now, I can get you into a house with Sabrina with a 580 FICO score. Unbelievable. And, and that's another 100% loan. It's 100% financing and the interest rates are still in the threes. Um, so it's, it's, and listen, that's with a 580 credit score. It, it really is. And it's, you know, one thing I've, I found Ben and, and tell me if this is what you see. A lot of times people have good credit in terms of they, they pay their mortgage, they pay their car, but they may have medical bills or something like that. And that's what's, uh, hindering their credit. Uh, how do you advise someone that has, they're paying their mortgage, they're paying their car payments, they're paying their credit card payments, but they've got some of those medical bills. How hard is it to get rid of those or to get a loan when you've got outstanding medical debt? Uh, all the more reason to call me first because, you know, if you have $4,000, I just had a customer that had $4,000 worth of medical debt and they had a $10,000 charge off from um, uh, another situation that was a regular credit card. And uh, when I ran the DU approval on it, um, what I found was that uh, in instead of paying off that charge off credit card, Fannie Mae decided to to, to avoid it. They wow. said, don't worry about it. Well, because of that information, I told her, hey, I need, let's, if you pay off $1,000 of these medical yeah. bills, your credit score is going to go to a 680. Well, now I can get you a, a three and a quarter. So they're, they're just that you've got to talk to a professional That's and expert exactly right. that, that cares for you. You know, because you deal with this every day Absolutely. and you're always having to come up with resolutions or, or ways to help someone or improve their credit score. Now, let's say that you get something taken care of and you do. I've heard of a rapid race score. Kind of tell us what that process is. Well, um, for the sake of time, rapid rescore is a, uh, a quick and easy process where I can get your credit score up, let's say 100 points, for example, um, by just sending in the information directly to the credit bureaus. Uh, overnight in it within about four or five days we have that new credit score yeah and now you're ready to right. roll so i mean things are not doom and gloom and, we, and and you and i i know us we don't know how to take no for an answer we're going to keep no. on we're going to keep on if there's a will there's a way if it's That's breathing right. it's breathing amen so uh the important thing is if you are thinking about selling your home or buying a home call us call sabrina realty associates we have a great team they work very hard for their clients. We uh, we will walk you from the beginning to the end. We will hold your hand throughout the whole process and hopefully build a very good friendship and relationship with you. You can reach us at 423-499-7780 or visit our website, sabrinarealty.com. And there's no one that works any harder than Ben if you're looking to get a home loan. How can they reach you, Ben? They can reach us at 423-805-9100. And, uh, you know, you're going to get the best service with home rate mortgage. And, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll stand behind you and I'll help you through it. Um, home rate mortgage.com. You get a quick quote and, uh, we will help you through the buying process. Um, you know, it's all about teaming up with the right realtor right. and the right lender folks. So, um, Hey, we've got a, a, a great, uh, you know, a great, uh, show in store for you next That's week. Right. And, uh, there's a lot of good things to come. We want your feedback on how to make the show uh, fit your needs more. That's right. So continue to uh, to Facebook us over at Hot, Hot News Talk Radio, and we really appreciate the time. We'll be back next week. That's Sabrina Realty and Ben Phillips. See you next week.